Afghanistan, the party America has been less than subtly trying to excuse itself from for over a decade now. It's gotten to the point where we don't want to be there, the roommate doesn't want us to be there, but the host keeps insisting on one more drink. We're the glue holding this whole thing together. So today on That's All I Have to Say About That, we're actually going to do a little bit of role playing. You're Joe Biden and I'm Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and together we're trying to answer the question of Afghanistan, should we stay or should we go? Now, For the purposes of this video, there are three major options sitting on Biden's desk. First, adhere to former President Donald Trump's deal with the Taliban, which would require Biden to withdraw all remaining US troops by May 1st. Second, negotiate an extension with the Taliban, allowing American forces to remain in the country beyond early May. Or third, divide the Trump-Taliban pact altogether and just keep on fighting in Afghanistan with no stated end date. Now, Before we start making plans for the future, let's ask the question. Where are we right now? So basically, Afghanistan is a good old fashioned military turducken. It started as a civil war between the Taliban and the Northern Alliance, and the Northern Alliance was finding their way off the map. 9 11 happened, and because the Taliban worked with Al Qaeda, America decided to cram itself right up in there. We started fighting on behalf of the Northern Alliance and before you know it, 20 years later we find ourselves in quite the awkward situation. You see, the Taliban are now closing in on major cities and the only thing keeping the government of Afghanistan, the government of Afghanistan, is the presence of United States forces in the region. The name of the game for the Trump administration was a two-fold strategy. First, America making a deal with the Taliban for a US troop withdrawal. Check. We'll see our way out in May 1st. Now, second, get the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan into a room together, get them to set aside their differences, and finally see that when we roll out, the country will have some sort of leadership and won't fall apart. And no check. The civil war is as violent as ever. As you can probably imagine, there's not a lot of ripe ground for compromise on forming a new government. What's halfway between a secular democracy and an Islamic caliphate? How about strict adherence to Buddhist ideology and an electoral college that overrepresents rural Taliban controlled regions? Deal? So, with that context, let me break down these three options for you, Mr. President. Option number one. May 1st, we're rolling out. No agreement between the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan. Really just cross your fingers and hope for not the worst. If you have absolutely no faith in the negotiations between these two parties, well then this is the option that you're going to be going for. It's really just tearing off the band-aid. This mentality is best exemplified by Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft fellow Adam Weinstein, who recently said, I support leaving by May. The Afghanistan talks may fall apart if we leave, but they also will fall apart if we stay. Leaving by May front loads these risks while not risking American lives. Basically, we can either leave now or we can say, hey, 21st time's a charm. One more year and I swear we can fix this. Of course, the major drawback to this strategy is it all but guarantees America leaving behind a chaotic civil war. Images of a renewed bloody war after America's withdrawal plastered on the front pages of newspapers would embarrass the Biden administration. It's even possible things could get so bad that leaving prematurely might actually lead the United States to re-enter the conflict again, perhaps with an even larger troop presence. I mean, if the fire department leaves because the building is now only half on fire, well, they're either going to be coming back in force or ignoring quite the blaze. A comparison is being made to Obama when he pulled the troops out of Iraq, leaving an opening for ISIS. We eventually had to reinvade with a larger force than the force we pulled out. So that's option number one. Option number two. Taliban, we're definitely leaving. 
but we're going to need an extension on that end date. We'll pull a few all-nighters and get the paper done. Just give us a few more weeks to duct tape together some sort of constitution so mediocre that nobody's going to want to start a war to improve it. Then we can leave. Sound good? No? Great, we're already on track then. Simply put, the Afghan government and the Taliban won't strike a deal by April, but they might if given enough time. Pending an agreement would allow officials in Kabul to lead their country without the major threat of violence, while also giving the Taliban some government power and global legitimacy. Here's the rub though. It's unclear whether the Taliban would even agree to that extension. As a part of the deal Trump negotiated with the Taliban, they're no longer shooting at us. What is clear though is that the one group that wants America out of Afghanistan more than our voters is the Taliban. Their message for America to date is pretty clear. Leave by May 1st or we fight you. Not a ton of wiggle room there, although you guys didn't specify a year. How about you pencil us in for, say, May 1st, 2023? Of course, if you have something to offer, the Taliban aren't beyond turning down a good deal. There are ways that the United States can get the Taliban to agree to an extension and perhaps pave the way towards a negotiated deal. Now that could include lifting sanctions, releasing the group's 7,000 prisoners, and removing the group from the State Department terrorist list. Yeah, it's a real 2020 elections worth of less than mediocre options. You really only choose to negotiate an extension if you think that there is a deal to be found between these two groups and you're willing to pay for it. So this brings us to our final option of the night. Last and definitely at least, we could always just break our deal with the Taliban and go back to no deals between any groups. Just continue to fight the war in Afghanistan indefinitely. Few think Biden will withdraw all troops by May 1st, which means that he will be keeping the United States service members in the country, with or without the Taliban's approval. We're either going to negotiate an extension with the Taliban or insist we know the other host and hope no one tries to throw us out of the party. Afghanistan, we can't quit you. Now, if Biden stays in the country without Taliban approval, that could lead the insurgents to attack and kill American personnel as they overtake major Afghan cities, perhaps even Kabul. Now, there is a very real possibility that this already half on fire house of cards could fall apart into a completely on fire pile of cards. All deals and negotiations nulled and America continuing to fight just to scrap together something resembling leadership that's stable enough for us to leave behind. At this point, we're not very picky. Essentially a return to pre-2018's war in Afghanistan. So those are the three options crossing Biden's desk right now. Which one do you think that he should go with? Let me know in the comments and I'll try to put a poll in the corner. That May 1st deadline is two months away and the question now is, are we going to have a parachute? Things are going to start moving pretty quickly and I'll be keeping an eye on the entire situation as we scramble to make a Biden strategy for Afghanistan. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First, if you want a more in-depth look at how the inner Afghan negotiations are going, I made a video about that. Link should be popping up somewhere around here any second now. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put on my videos. If you want to support independent, non-partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.